Okay, so this video is going to start my favorite unit, and this is going to be genetics. Okay, and genetics um, covers a large amount of material, and it helps us circle back to a lot of things and explain a lot of things. But this image that I have sent here is one of my favorite guys. This is, this is Gregor Mendel, okay? And you've probably all heard about him because you've had to study him um, probably in middle school. Uh, and Mendel is considered the father of genetics, and rightly so. Now, his discoveries um, were, were accidental, but they were based on him being very observant and probably can be attributed to what his job title was. And if you look at him, he's, he was a, a friar, which, you know, would be a, what we would consider a monk. And he was living in an Austrian monastery. Um, I think the area where he, he was is now the, part of the Czech Republic, but he was considered Austrian and he spoke German and he um, was in this monastery and had taken a vow of science, of silence. Um, and he was a mathematician, he was a biologist, he was a meteorologist, he was just fascinated with, with science and math, and just spent a lot of time thinking about it. And one of the crazy things about him is his job in the monastery was to work in the garden. So good old Mendel, he goes about his business, he's not talking to anybody, he's just working in the garden, and he's growing food for the monastery. And so he's got his little garden set out, and he's planting, for whatever reason, peas, okay? And you and I, if we looked at a pea, it would just be like a little green seed. All right, so he's, he's doing nothing more than just being outside. Uh, this is part of his chore. And he's planting the seeds, and the plants grow, and he harvests the plants and gets peas. But over, you know, just him being nosy and observant like a good scientist is, he starts noticing a couple of things. He notices that of all the plants that he plants, there's two types of seeds. He either gets green seeds or he gets yellow seeds. And he's like, okay, that's kind of interesting. And then he notices, like, of all the plants he plants, the flowers are either purple flowers or... They are just white flowers, no other options, okay? So seed color is either green or yellow. Flower color is either purple or white. Um, he also notices that the plants either tend to be tall, so we'll do tall plants, or they tend to be short plants, okay? And it's a kind of a real, it's, it's ironic that this was the plant that he was planting because this plant was the perfect test subject for his observations. So he got really curious and he decided to do an experiment. And so he takes the plants and I'm not sure which uh, characteristic he started with first, um, but the characteristics, the physical characteristics of an organism, so your physical characteristics later on became termed your phenotype. Okay, now this is way before Mendel's time that he would never have called it a phenotype, but it's what you look like. So I'll start with the flower color. So we'll do the phenotype of flower color. So what he did is um, plants reproduce sexually. So you have to, if you want to control reproduction, you have to keep them covered and keep them separate because the pollen is the male sex cell and then the flower is the receptacle that contains the female sex cell, so you can't let them mix. So he would take a white flower or, and many, many white flowers and he would plant them on one side of the garden and he would plant the purple ones on another side of the garden and then he would also cover them. So he would cover them in like bags, and we didn't have plastic back then, so I'm not sure what he was covering them with. Uh, if you want to know more, you can investigate Mr. Mendel, but he's covering them so that insects cannot cross-pollinate, and so that wind doesn't blow the pollen. It keeps them isolated. And then he would take a paintbrush, and he would uh, get the pollen off of a white flower, and he would pollinate only white flowers. So he was doing artificial 
um, reproduction. So white pollinated with a white, okay? And then he would do the same thing over here, get into a little paintbrush. And mind you, he's doing this with lots of plants. This was not just two plants. And in science, the more you replicate an experiment, the, the more valid your results become. But then he does purple times purple, okay? Keeps them, keeps them covered, uh, faults, you know, pollinates them. And so he can control uh, what, what uh, he didn't know it, but he's controlling what genes they get. All right, so every time he did a white with a white, he got white. And then every time he did purple with a purple, he would get purple. And he literally was so patient that he would cross them, let them produce seeds, keep the seeds separate, and then plant the seeds. So it was like, oh, hundreds and hundreds of plants that he did this, and he recorded all of his data. And I don't know, like, where, you know, what he was doing here, but like any good scientist, he said, hmm, wonder what happens if I take a white one and I cross it with the purple one. And so he kept them isolated, and they were still separated. And the only way that they were pollinated is he took pollen from a purple and put it on a white, and took pollen from a white and put it on a purple. So he did something called crossbreeding, okay? And he did it on a cross-pollination, and he did it on purpose. And then all of a sudden, every single flower came out purple. He did not get a single white flower, like not any. So he thought his experiment had failed um, because he thought maybe he just didn't use the paintbrush right or, or it wasn't working right, and he got really frustrated. So he just let the pea plants grow. He's just like, whatever. Okay, so they're all growing together. He leaves them uncovered. And then the next year, he gets purple flowers. But white flowers showed back up. And he was like, what? Like, what happened? Like, what's the difference? And so then he restarted his experiment and looked back at it again to see what was going on. He literally, okay, so in this original um, generation, this parent is considered a purebred parent, okay? So they were pure white, calls them the P generation because they had they had only been mixed with white pollen plants for years and years. These was were purebred purple. So they had only mixed with purple for years and years and years. So this is your P generation. When he crossed them, he mixed a purple with a white. So these were considered hybrids. All right, and we'll come back and we'll talk about what our new our scientific terms are for them now. But the P generation here, and then their offspring, these hybrids are called F1. So this is the first filial generation. So the parents breed the F1s. And then you just let the F1s cross-pollinate with each other and make the F2 generation. Okay? Your F2 generation is where the white color showed back up. Now, we know now and Mendel soon figured out that there was something about the gene for flower color that purple was able to win out or beat white when they were mixed. So purple, we know, is a dominant trait to white in flower color on these pea plants. Now, it's not the same in every organism and every species, but in this particular plant, purple was dominant to white. So that put him on something, and he said, okay, let me try something different. So he goes now with his garden again, and he does the same experiment with seeds. So he grows plants that just make green seeds, and he self-pollinates and self-pollinates and makes them purebred. And then he does the same thing with yellow seeds. And this is, I mean, this takes a couple of growing seasons, and he makes them purebred. I know you can't see that. Okay. And so then he crosses them. And every single one of the pea plants is yellow. And so he called this generation, since that's the purebred generation, those are the peas, pea generation. The offspring that they had, this was your F1. And then he let 
the F1s cross with F1. So he just let these plants all mix up and interbreed. And when he did, they made F2. And one, two, three, three out of four of the plants were yellow seeds. But guess what showed back up? Green. So green showed back up. And he literally, I'll tell you the count, he counted 2,001 green seeds and 6,022 yellow seeds in that generation. So it's uh, about a six to two ratio or a three to one ratio. So yellow in that F2 generation was in a three to one ratio. We now know that that meant that yellow genes for the seed color were dominant to the green genes for seed color. Over here in this flower experiment with the color, in this F2 generation, when he counted, he counted, let's see how many flowers he counted, 705 purple, 224 white. And it gave him a 3.15 to one ratio, so almost a three to one ratio. So he's getting a three to one ratio with the seed color and he's getting a three to one ratio with the flower color. He did the same thing with, um, he had wrinkled seeds and round seeds. So he did round seeds times wrinkled seeds. And they were purebreds. They had their F1 generation and every single one of them was round. So that lets us know that round is dominant and wrinkled is recessive. Then in the F2 generation, you get a three to one ratio of round to wrinkled. All right, did the same thing with the pod color. You had green pods times yellow pods. Purebred, purebred. You mix the two to get the F1, which would be hybrid, and all of them showed up green. So that let him know that green was dominant to yellow. And he then let the F1s cross and made the next generation F2. Same deal. It came out to be a 2.95 to 1 ratio of green to yellow. So uh, I think tall times short gave him all tall. So tall was dominant to short, and then um, he called him tall and dwarf, and that was also in a three-to-one ratio. So Mendel, he was just looking and he was noticing that when plants reproduce, and a lot of kids are surprised that plants reproduce sexually, that there are traits that are dominant and recessive. And so in Mendelian genetics, which is based on our little father of genetics, Mendel, dominant and recessive are clear, okay? Now later on, we're gonna learn some traits that aren't quite clearly dominant or recessive. Sometimes one blends, sometimes one is dominant, one, um, they get spotted. There's all kind of stuff going on. But what you need to remember about Mendel is he studied the pea plants and he came up with the concept of alleles. Okay, and alleles are all those things that we've been writing for the last couple weeks, like there's dominant alleles and recessive alleles. And alleles are different versions of a trait. Okay, so we'll write that down. Different versions of a trait. So on your chromosomes, okay, so we'll do the trait for... Uh, we'll do something simple. Now remember, it's a lot more complicated than this, but this is the basics of how it works. So let's say we are, we're looking at pair number 10 of your chromosomes. You have 23 pairs. And on pair number 10, your first chromosome you got from your dad, okay? So I'll color it a little bit blue. And the second chromosome you got from your mom, so I'll call it a little bit pink. And let's just say that on that chromosome, on this little section that I've highlighted is where there is a gene for eye color. 
Now, you're, you have genes for eye color on about five different chromosomes, so it's a, it's a lot of more combination than this, but we'll just assume it's, it's just real simple. And let's say your dad gave you a dominant allele. So dad gave you the dominant allele for brown, and mom gave you the recessive allele for blue. So the way we can figure out your phenotype, which is how you physically look, and in this situation, your eye color. So the gene is eye color. The alleles are the traits that you receive from your parents. And when we put them together, that's going to be our genotype. So the genotype for this person for eye color is big B, little b. Now you could write it the other way, but it's just the correct way genetically to write it. So you get a dominant brown gene and a recessive blue gene. So in this situation, since this is dominant to this, your phenotype is going to be brown eyes. Okay? You carry the blue gene, and you receive the blue gene from your mother. It just is not expressed. And the reason it's not expressed is because bit, the brown is dominant to the blue. So therefore, when you go through meiosis and you make your egg cells or your sperm cells, you could actually, you have a 50-50 chance of giving the baby the blue gene and a 50-50 chance of giving the baby the brown gene because you're going to give them one of your letters, right? Some of you, you have brown eyes and all you have is the brown gene. Okay, so with, um, with Mendel's experiment, um, we're going to come up with some different words that he gave us. So, you know, we've already stated alleles, and we've already started, uh, you've got genotype and phenotype. Um, one of the things with the page with the plants, uh, the P generation, these are your pure breeding, so make sure you understand that, and that when you cross two pures, what you end up with is a hybrid, and these are your F1 generations, and then after that, when two, when the F1s mate with each other, they make the F2 generation. Okay, so those are those term those terms are used a lot. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to show you is a quick little fast Punnett square from Mendel's experiment. So I'm going to use seed color, and he did a purebred yellow with green. All right, we now know that yellow is dominant to green. Okay, so when he mix, mixed the purebred yellow with the purebred green, I'm going to use the letters A. The yellow had the two dominant alleles and the green had the two recessive alleles. Okay, so purebred dominant times purebred recessive is what you get when you when you do the P, this is your P generation, your purebred generation. All right, so when you do a Punnett square, you basically take the two parents and you write down the alleles that the parent can give to the offspring. So a purebred yellow plant can only give dominant alleles. A purebred recessive plant can only give recessive alleles. But this would be the options, the possibility. Punnett squares are just probability. And so in this situation, the, dom the yellow plant can only give yellow genes. The green plant can only give green genes. And if they mated, and pollinated each other, these two plants, every single option would be yellow seeds. Okay, so it's 100% chance. The probability is 100%. But what we should see here is that every single one of these uh, possible offsprings has the exact same genotype. They are now not purebred. They're hybrids. So they're big A, little a. And this is our F1 generation. Now what Mendel did is he let these guys mate with each other. So he had a big A, little a, with a big A, little a, and both of them were yellow. So when you do the probability of their offspring, this plant could give the baby the dominant yellow gene, or he could give the recessive green. Same thing with this plant, dominant yellow or recessive green. 
Now, when they mix, these are all the probabilities and possibilities of offspring. So they could both give the baby the dominant yellow gene, and there would be yellow seeds. This combination, this parent could give the dominant, and that parent could give the recessive, and so you have a heterozygous, so here's a new word, heterozygous is, a, is another term for hybrid, so we'll push slash hybrid. This would be homozygous, which will be the same as purebred, All right? And then in this box, that parent could give the big A, that parent could give the little A, and that's another yellow baby, but in this last box, is where you're saying we have a chance. Two little A's, okay? And in that situation, that's where it is probable that these two parents who happen to have yellow seeds only could actually have a baby with green seeds or an offspring with green seeds. And this is exactly what Mendel saw. So it was a three out of four chance because it was one, two, three out of four boxes were yellow seeds. But there was that one out of four chance that green seed showed up. And that's exactly what he saw. And I think I told you the numbers were he saw 6,022 or counted that many yellow seeds and he counted 2,001 green seeds, which is almost in a perfect three to one ratio. Okay, so in Mendelian genetics, it's based on pure dominance. Okay, and in this situation, yellow seeds are dominant to green and you're always gonna get this type of outcome. So you've got now homozygous, heterozygous, so these purebreds are called homozygous for a trait, and then you've got heterozygous, which are your hybrids. So these are homozygous dominant, and these are homozygous recessive. And anytime you wanna do a Punnett square, what you're actually doing is just showing the, all the possible combinations that two parents can have when they make a baby. We will be doing lots of Punnett squares. So for practice, I want you to do big A is tall, little a is short, and I want you to try and cross a homozygous tall dad, okay, and these are plants, with a short Mom, okay, what are all the offspring gonna be? First of all, homozygous means I have the same two letters. Tall means I have the dominant allele for tall. So I'm gonna be two big A's. If I am short, I cannot have any tall alleles. So my genotype as the short mom has to be two little A's. When we do this cross, Punnett square and probability, tells you that the dad can only give tall genes, the mom can only give short genes. So every one of their offspring is 100% or four out of four tall. Okay, so the word homozygous and heterozygous changes things. Now, if dad was hybrid tall or heterozygous for tall, then his letters would be big A and little a. And if he had babies with this same mom, now we have a different outcome because mom still can only give the recessive A. But this dad, because he's hybrid, he's tall because tall is dominant to short, but he could give the baby a tall gene or he could give the baby a short gene. And in this scenario, when you fill in all the boxes, now the probability changes. Two out of the four boxes are tall, but two out of the four boxes are short. So just because a tall person or a tall plant and a short plant mix doesn't mean you get the same outcome. It's all about the genotype of the parents. This one, there's no chance of short offspring. This one, there's a 50% chance. So your genotypes determine your phenotypes. And this is all basic Mendelian genetics where one trait is dominant to the other.